He's a columnist, a funny man, and he sometimes goes by the AKA Inspector Ross Hagen Engler. Welcome to Sisterhood. It's good to be here. Awesome, awesome. So you are in an in, um, interracial relationship, rather a marriage. Um, so yeah. what made you decide to write the book Black Girls for Guys Who Aren't Black? Yeah, it's about marrying black girls for guys who aren't black. So I just found I was having a lot of really interesting insights, you know, just in the day-to-day -day running of our relationship. So I thought, uh, you know, other people might find it entertaining, you know, or some of them are quite deep yeah. insights and others are just funny little things you notice. So. It's a mixture of some serious and some entertainment. Yeah. And just to, like just briefly take us through what you like have in your book. What what um, specific aspects are you focusing on? Well, it starts off with like how did you meet? You know, straight up basic things. You know, because it's the first thing everybody asks. You know, so how did you guys meet? In our case, it was at the baseline in Newtown, uh, quite a night with watching Zola, Zola or something <laughs> like that. So the learning from that is. If you want to meet black people, go where the black people are. <laughs> and then there's things it. like uh, Lobola. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we also have a, a, a young child, so it's, it's a mixed race child, yeah. so there's some interesting things there. And just silly things like, you know, black women always change their hair, so you got to be ready yeah. for it. Don't be shocked <laughs> when she comes home looking too different. Uh, this thing called Makabis Abelungu is like white people's prices. Yeah. We always. If my wife goes out to buy something, you know, if she wants to buy a washing machine, you know, she'll pay like 1,000, I'll pay 2,000. We're like, what's up with that, you know? So now we've learned, you know, if we yeah. go shopping, just let the black person speak to the, <laughs> to the shop assistant, we just get better Strategizing deals. Strategizing properly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, that's okay. good. Okay, well, obviously being in an interracial marriage, there are some challenges that you guys probably had to face. Mm. What would you say are some of the challenges that you go through on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, the main challenge is, is cultural awareness. Mm. You know, I, I'm pretty convinced that there's no such thing as race. Race mm. is just something that someone invented. Mm. But what does distinguish us is, is culture and class. But in, in, in our case, culture is, is a real distinguishing factor. So you just, she's a Kosa person. She's from uh, uh, Mampondo Mise nation. Mm. So they've, they have certain traditions and cultural peculiarities. Mm. And then of course I do too. And so you just got to become aware of them and then you know, in some ways you're learning them and other ways you just got to draw the line and be like, okay, you know, I'll check out your food, it's cool, but tripe I'm not going to have. You know, like I've tried yeah. it, I realize I don't like tripe. I'm not going to eat it just And that's be, just a preference. That's yeah, a, it's, you know, it's yeah. be open and I'm open-minded enough to try it, but then... It didn't work out for you. Exactly, so. you know. <laughs> some stuff, there's omelette quite, is like, just like township yeah. chicken. It's like strong, you know. That stuff is cool, you know. Yeah. But a uh, hey, trap, uh, ulusu, they call it. Ah, mm. it's not for it's me. It's not working out. Uh, uh. Okay, I must say, I, I, I picked up on your clicks when you say Kosa. Mm. Would you say that you have mastered those clicks? Mastered the clicks. Uh, in fact, sometimes that's the best part about my, my Kosa speaking. I can do lots of clicks, but oh, really? my, my vocab just, is terrible. Just like no. a young demonstration. No, oh, I, I'm, come not, on. I, I'm not very, I'm not that good. <laughs> no, the thing is just that um, I grew up in the Eastern Cape, so mm. actually it's sort of in your ear. So you can, the pronunciation, yeah. you can just about pull it off. Eh? But um, the real challenge is that most black people have got better English than, than, than your Kosa. So you end up just speaking English, yeah. you know, and it's, it's awkward because, um, you know, black people love a white guy who can speak yeah. good Kosa, but they don't have time for a guy who's like learning, you know, so it's difficult to get from the learning to the good, you know. They, but it works out at the end yeah, of the day. Well, you just end up speaking English yeah. and then spicing it in with a couple of little <laughs> little clicks here and there, you know. I love it, I love it. So obviously you had to go through the Lobola process. Mm. Being a white man, not mm. to just highlight the whole racial factor. Mm. What was that process like for you? Yeah, well, again, it was a cultural journey. Uh, the main, what I learned about it is that it's, it's pretty much a drawn out process aimed at getting two families to know each other. You know, when you come in there as a white person, you're like, it's all about getting a bride price. So, you know, it's like, all right, just give me a price. Just yeah. let's, let's start talking numbers. And that's not what you need to do. You need to just relax and explain things. You know, our family comes from way back, yeah. you know, and just try and get people to understand each other that way, you know, because the Cause other... the negotiation. Yeah, it's, so, it's, yeah. Well, it's, it's getting to know 
mixed in with the negotiation. Well, you have a little girl now. Mm. Um, are you guys making it a point to teach her both English, or rather raise her in both English and Kosa background? And maybe, mm. like, hopefully a little bit of German as well? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm technically German. My yeah. wife is all about, hey, I must teach her, like, German stuff. I'm like, yeah, but you're in South Africa. Is that useful, you know? So yeah. maybe we'll do that, but definitely English and, and Kosa. So, I mean, she's only just turned one now, so it's Ooh. very basic child rearing thing, you know, you put on your hat, soak up, get away from there, you know, just basic stuff and she's sort of learning it, you know, her third word she learned was a swear word, which is not ideal, so it makes you realise, okay, we've got a bit of self-censorship there, but uh, yeah, man, she's, I think she'll probably come yeah. up with a bit of both. Eh? That's beautiful. So where can we get a hold of the book? The book is available in uh, mainstream bookshops mm -hmm. at uh, your exclusive books in CNA and on Kalahari.com. Otherwise, have a look on my blog. It's hogginshouse.com. You can see a lot of my writing and also a guide to where you can where you can buy the book as well. Okay, and of course, on um, all the other social medias, where can we get a hold of you? I'm on Twitter at Hagen Engler, mm -hmm. and uh, I've got a place called Hagen's House on on Facebook or just my personal page at um, Hagen Engler. Yeah. Come say how's it. Well, like I said, my cousin actually owns this book, so I think I'm going to just get back home and start reading it. Check it out. Yes. Hey, we're here to entertain it. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Sisterhood. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Sisterhood.